Mm. It's all about hydration. That's the secret to a perfect pizza dough. And trust me, it's not as tricky as it sounds. With the right technique, you'll have a dough that's soft, stretchy, and has just the right amount of chew. Today, I'll show you how I made a proper pizza dough for the first time. When I made my ube pizza recently, the dough wasn't where it needed to be. It was sticky and dry at the same time, which made it tear easily when I tried to stretch it. What was the mistake? I added too much flour while kneading because I was too focused on keeping it from sticking to the bowl early on. I made another mistake during the rise. I didn't cover the dough with plastic wrap or a damp towel, so the top layer dried out and eventually hardened. To make things worse, I left it to rise in the oven at 90 degrees for way longer than it should have, which overproofed the dough. These were valuable lessons and I'm ready to fix them this time around. Let's go see how this dough turns out. Let's kick things off by measuring out the ingredients. To make a dough that makes two pizzas, I'll be using 340 grams of double zero flour and a total of 210 grams of water. I'm going to take 30 grams of that water and set it aside so that I can use it to activate the yeast when we get to that step later on. Now it's time for the autolyze, and if you don't know what that is, neither did I. It's a crucial step that can really elevate your pizza dough, where you hydrate the flour before adding the active yeast and salt. For this, I'll mix all of my flour with 85% of the total water, in this case 180 grams. This gives the dough time to develop naturally, making it softer and easier to work with later. After mixing, I hit my first hurdle. The dough seemed a bit too dry. Turns out, double zero flour tends to absorb more water than other flours. To fix this, I'll add an extra 10 grams of water continue mixing until the dough becomes smoother and more workable. Once it has, I'll let it rest for about 30 minutes. This resting period is essential. It allows the flour to fully hydrate and for the gluten to start developing naturally. This process makes the dough much easier to work with later on and helps achieve that perfect chewy texture. Think of it as giving the dough time to relax and prepare itself for kneading. So when we get to that step, it'll be much more elastic and smooth. While the dough rests, I'll get that 30 grams of water to 110 degrees Fahrenheit to activate the yeast. Here's where I hit my second hurdle. After two attempts, the yeast did not activate, and I realized my jar of active yeast was dead since it's probably one year old by now. Luckily, I had a packet of instant yeast on hand which works just as well, so I'll be using that instead. Once the autolyze step is complete, I'll add the yeast mixture and begin kneading the dough. I'm letting the stand mixer handle most of the work, but I'll keep a close eye on it to make sure it stays balanced and doesn't move around. This is usually the point where I'd get nervous about the dough being too wet and start adding more flour. But this time, I'm holding back and trusting the process. Halfway through, I started to worry. The dough looked like wet clay and I felt like I was back in pottery class. But still, I held strong and resisted the urge to add more flour. And just like that, letting the mixer run a little longer solved the issue. The dough came together perfectly and even the mixing bowl looks spotless now. After about 10 to 12 minutes of kneading, the dough looks beautifully smooth, so it's time to give it the window pane test. This simple test checks if the dough has developed enough gluten and is properly kneaded. To do the window pane test, take a small piece of your dough and gently stretch it. If it stretches thin enough to let light through without tearing, that means the gluten structure is strong and well developed. But if it tears easily, it needs a bit more kneading. The good news for the window pane test, you don't actually need a window for this. Any light source will work.
now that my dough has passed the window pane test, it's time for the first rise. I'll shape the dough into a smooth ball and coat it with a thin layer of oil to prevent it from drying out. I'll place it back in the bowl, cover it with plastic wrap that's also lightly coated with oil, and then the resting begins. I'll let the dough rise at room temperature for about 3 hours, making sure to keep it away from any direct sunlight. To create the ideal environment, I'm going to let it rise inside my microwave alongside a bowl of warm water. I opted to use the microwave instead of the oven because it's easier to maintain humidity in a smaller space. Dude, that is soft. After three hours, the dough has definitely grown in size. It's soft, pillowy, and ready for the next step. This is the softest dough I've ever made. Now, I'll divide it into two portions and transfer them to separate bowls. I'll make sure both the bowls and dough are lightly coated with oil to prevent sticking and drying out during the final rise. Can't forget to coat the plastic wrap with oil as well. So now, it's time for the second and final rise. Back into the microwave they go for another two hours. This is definitely double in size. Oh man. Oh, it's so soft. Ooh. We're almost at the finish line now. It's been several hours of patience and prep, and I'm looking forward to finally cooking up these pizzas. Flattening and stretching the dough was easier than usual this time around. It's amazing how effortless it becomes when the dough is properly hydrated. It's very stretchy. What did I do? Did I do this too? Ooh, it's staying flat. Look at this. Getting thinner. Oh yeah. I'm keeping it simple with the toppings. Classic tomato sauce, shredded mozzarella cheese, and some pepperoni. Can't wait to get this pizza in the oven. Get that, all that smoke out of there. All right, got it in there. So much grease. I don't know about you, but I'm not eating all that grease. Just look at what the paper towel soaked up. After going through this process, I really feel like I've learned the basics of making a properly hydrated pizza dough. It's been a success in learning, and there's definitely room for improvement next time. But for now, I'm happy with how far I've come. One thing I struggled with today was sliding the pizza off the peel, especially since I used all-purpose flour. For better results next time, I will use semolina flour. Its coarser texture not only helps the dough slide off more smoothly, but it also adds a slight crunch to the pizza's bottom crust, giving it that perfect bite. No use of excess flour, and I feel like that was key. And also, Coating the dough with oil and wrapping the bowl with plastic wrap, greased plastic wrap, really helped with keeping it hydrated, especially when it rose for three hours the first time and two hours the second time. Overall, I'm really satisfied with how the pizza dough turned out. It's the best one I've made so far, and I'm confident that with each new attempt, it will only get better from here. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, here at our virtual table, we make this a place to inspire and learn. If this video inspired you to make this, or if there's a certain way that you make this dish, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell to stay tuned for next week's video, where Chef Teresa kicks off Filipino American Heritage Month by making pork belly sinigang. See you all in the next one.